Good morning, preppers. Welcome to the channel. Time is short indeed. As we see the economy tanking, uh, I've been noticing that some of the stock markets have been going down again. I don't see like a huge crash in the stock markets all at once, although that may happen. I see going down, recover a little bit, go down, recover a little bit. And as we see the economy getting worse and worse, uh, we're going to have ramifications, obviously. And I actually came out of a video about this a few days ago, but I want to add on to that video. And I want to look at 20 scary things. And these things are scaring. It's not fear mongering, it's preparing because we can't control the economy. Somebody else is doing that for us. But we can actually try to change what we do to be able to prepare for those things that are coming. All right, so here's 20 things to look for and to prepare for uh, when and if the economy collapses. Number one, we're going to see an increase in strong arm arbor robberies. Uh, strong arm, well, I mean, not just robberies overall too. doesn't necessarily have to be armed, but uh, you need to be able to prepare, you know, protect yourself, take a protection course if you can from some type of local martial, martial arts studio, some really cool stuff. And of course, check into getting your own concealed weapons permit uh, to be able to counteract that. Number two, water quality will drop. You know, you're not going to have as many employees in the water departments because there's not enough taxes coming in because there's not as many people buying things. You know, the whole thing cascades and makes things uh, amplify, multiply themselves. So uh, water quality is going to be worse. So definitely find a way to uh, purify your water um, and even try to find ways, look up to purify your water without actually having to use a store-bought water filter. You know, but like things like Berkey's work very well for this kind of thing, but just make sure you have enough of the filters to uh, continue that process for quite some time. I mean, I think we're looking at a good 10 year period. We're going to have to deal with this. Number three, we've already seen this started rioting increases. Um, obviously you're in, when you're in a city or even specific cities, you want to be able to make sure you stay out of those areas with rioting, not to mention business loss, but obviously loss of life as well. Number four, here's a scary one. Kidnappings will increase. And this is the things we see in countries where we see economies collapsing because people will do anything they can to either get political power or to try to get money by extorting it from kidnapping kidnappings. Number five, along the same lines, carjackings will also happen more often. So be able to protect your car. We always drive and make sure the doors are locked wherever we are. I know like in our van, when you drive, the doors are locked. But once you put it in park, the doors will unlock. And if somebody's running in the store, we'll lock them back up again to make sure nobody can just walk in because people will do those kind of things. Number six, uh, medical services will be in trouble, but hospitals themselves will become overcrowded and uh, making it so you have long, long, long waits. If you actually look in socialist and communist countries, that's a very typical thing. And along those lines too, number seven is medical treatment will decrease in quality. Uh, America has pretty good medical quality, depending on what kind of medicine you look at. Um, but overall, you're going to see the medical quality, medical qualities decreasing. And I've been in some third world countries in my military days where, uh, oxygen was the only thing hospitals had. And I don't think that's ever going to happen in the United States. You never know, but either way you need to prepare for that as well. Uh, number eight, gasoline prices will increase, but not only that, but shortages and eventually rationing of gasoline as well. And if you don't actually have a true meaning like a job to go to, especially an important job to go to for gas, you may not get the rationing you're looking for. Number nine, banks will fail and close, which is a big scary one. That's why I always say try to di diversify your money. If you actually have some money in the bank, obviously you need to have a lot of money cash wise, but try to diversify it. Try to five, find at least five different banks to hold your money, specifically just in savings too. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, number 10, because of the same thing, money for the banks even are open will not let you withdraw money. It can't be withdrawn. The ATM machines will, will close down. But even if they are open, often you'll see long, long lines to try to get simply a meager amount of cash out of the banks. Number 11, political unrest increases, not even just riots, but political unrest with the protesting, you know, jamming up highways, all that crap we've been seeing for the past couple of years. Even more so, probably even worse so, number 12, violence overall will just increase. Just overall violence as people have less money for food and there's been more political turmoil and less uncertainty as far as what's happening in the future. Well, I guess more uncertainty of what's happening in the future. You're going to see become, people becoming more violent, not even simply just with robberies and such, just a violent nature kicking out. Number 13, gangs will form as well because of this violence. And of course, because of massive budget cuts, not to mention the defund the police crap, um, you're going to see the police officers being overwhelmed and they're not going to be able to stop a lot of these gangs from forming. 
Now, because of this, and number 14 is a good thing, neighborhoods will start forming posses and armed guard armed groups. And I've actually seen this firsthand. And I like this for the fact that you're going to see the neighbors sticking together and actually reforming communities because the United States communities are not working very well. Neighborhoods are not like they used to be. You know, you can live next door to someone for 10 years and not even know them, barely even say hi to them. But you actually get to some third world countries and it's extremely common to find roving people with automatic weapons, even down neighborhood streets, protecting the neighborhoods as they take turns having watches. So that's probably a good one. Number 15, loss of utilities. Uh, complete loss, at the very least, intermittent losses, where you may actually have blackouts at certain times. Again, we talked about water quality not being so so good. Gases, natural gas, propane, etc. You're not going to be able to just use it all the time like you are used to. And because of this, number 16, people will start burning things to keep warm. And it's not uncommon in those situations. You'll find that they'll actually break up furniture, you know, frames from the wall, whatever they can to try to actually keep warm because it's better to have a house that's ransacked and broken than to be dead. So that's a very interesting one. Of course, we're getting worse as we go, aren't we? Number 17, you'll actually have an increase in animals running the streets because what happens in those situations, the families can't keep up with pets, for example, and they'll just let them go. And uh, I know like in the United States, we have the pound and such and um, what do they call it? There's their term for it. But anyway, um, we try to keep the animals off the streets here. But again, taxes and everything else, unless people are completely volunteering, are going to have a difficult time catching those animals. So you're actually going to see an increase in wild animals. And you'll actually find packs of dogs. They aren't necessarily always violent, but that is something you can never trust these packs of dogs because they're hungry. And as packs, they stick together. It's very interesting how they revert almost back, almost back to a wild state. You just don't go near them. Leave them alone. Uh, number 18. This also leads to more pets becoming dinner as people in their own home will fry up their puppy dog. Hopefully not. That's really disgusting. Um, but even more so, people will steal each other's pets to be able to cook them and whatever they do to survive. You know, hunger will drive people to do really crazy things. As we continue and things get worse and worse, then finally we hit number 19 where military takes control, takes control of the streets, takes control of the legal systems, takes control of the courts. Then that leaves us number 20 is complete martial law with a complete political revamping. All right, scary stuff. And this is supposed to be scary stuff because I find the scary stuff is what's going to spur you to get ready to be able to try, to try to prepare for what's coming. And if you prepare for a lot of these things and all this doesn't pan out, I hope it doesn't. I hope none of this happens. Well, at least you're prepared. At least you have a lot of those things set aside anyway. It's always better to be safe than sorry. Or even more so as we say, uh, it's better to be prepared than to live in fear. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.